Once more, slick and shiny, tongue-in-cheek productions stumbles our way through a maze of digital nonsense to bring you another look at one of the local communities. The community we're going to look at this time is going to be Murray's, Murraysville. To make this a bit more palatable, I'm going to put this thing on uh, autopilot because I get bored at people who just talk to me and don't uh, don't give me some pictures to look at. There are really two stories about Murraysville, and we're only going to tell the first story today. This is Murraysville number one, and we'll be talking about how Murraysville happened, how it came about, why it came about, who made it happen. The second story is about the gas well. The gas well was the first one in Westmoreland County, and to make things more exciting, it exploded, and it was on fire for several years. They couldn't put it out. The beginnings of uh, Murraysville have to do with two roads that really had a lot to do with Murraysville coming about. The first one was Forbes Road, which dated back to the time of the French and Indian War, the 1750s. And the second one was called the Northern Pike. It goes more or less like Route 22 goes through there now. And both of those, both of those were instrumental in having you know the place become a town. What really made it become a town was Jeremiah Murray, the guy who laid the town out and started a town and named it after himself. He was born in Ireland. In about 1781, he showed up here in this country, and the next year he showed up out there where Murraysville was going to be. He wanted to find a place where he could have a farm and a mill. He wanted to have a grist mill and saw mill, that kind of a place. Territory around where what become Murraysville would be a good place to do that. And then he settled there. He was also a storekeeper. He had a, a little store. At first it was in his own house. But he had a store for most of his life. Something to know about Murraysville is that it, uh, in the 70s, there was something went on out there that has, from my point of view, caused a bit of confusion. The borough of Murray's, Murraysville, it was a town, you know, a rather small town, but it was decided that they should make all of the township that Murraysville is in, called Franklin Township, a place called the Municipality of Murraysville. If somebody is looking for the Municipality of Murraysville, they probably think they're looking for a town. They're not. They're looking for a whole township, which used to be Franklin Township, which doesn't exist anymore. I, I don't think it was a good idea, but anyhow, talk to somebody who lives there, see, see what their take is on it. And what we're going to do here is talk a little bit about some of the people involved. Now that was Jeremiah Murray. He's, he's listed as a captain there. He was a captain in the local militia. He also, I think he must have had a bit of money because this painting of him was done when he was still in his 20s. And most people back at the time, well, you know, after he showed up there in the 1780s, didn't have much money, but he apparently had enough money to have a painting done of him. That also is Jeremiah Murray after a few years went by. Not only is Murray older, but it looks like the painting is older. Look at look at the uh, texture of that painting, how, how it's crinkled and cracking. These are roads going through the area and streams. Blue are streams. This red line is Forbes Road, where General Forbes brought an army of several thousand men, about 4,000 guys, during the French and Indian War into Pittsburgh. And that went through what eventually became Murraysville. The other thing that went through there is what we now know as Route 22. It was then known as the Northern Pike. But both of these arteries became instrumental in bringing people there, one of whom was Jeremiah Murray, 
who came in in the 1780s on Forbes Road and decided that this was a place to settle. The Northern Pike came through there and Jeremiah Murray decided at that point the place should become a town. So he had a grid laid out with, you know, lots apportioned and a town square and he built his own house on that town square, a brick house. It was known as the corner brick for a long time. This was a grandson of Jeremiah Murray. One son and uh, five daughters. And so he had a number of descendants, this being one of them. Dr. John S. Murray was uh, a grandson, was a doctor during the Civil War. And believe me, I, I do not envy anybody who was a physician during that that horrible conflict. I can think of one man who was a doctor during the Civil War and ended up ending his own life. He just couldn't take it. But uh, Dr. John Murray survived and he came back and he was a prominent physician. Now this is the house that uh, Jeremiah Murray had built on the town square of the town that he laid out. It was referred to as the corner brick and he lived in it and it was also lived in other people after his death. In the 1980s someone decided that they would uh, destroy it and that's what happened. This shows it in context. It's up in the corner, the northwest corner of the town square. This is the town square. This is the northern pike going through. This mapping is 1867 a north and south route here. This is the town square. And right on this town square, this was Murray's house that he had built. And down here, he had a, uh, a store, which eventually became Patty Brothers Store because Murray did not live forever. He, forever. he passed away around 1918. Uh, 35, I believe. That was the store. There were also mills around there. Murray had a mill, and that just shows the kind of mills that there were. And I think maybe we're approaching time here. I think we should shut this down so as not to get too long. This just shows a part of Franklin Township where the Murraysville was, and this was the uh, railroad that finally would come in in the 18, early 1890s. I'm going to shut this down now and say so long until I see you again for the second one on uh, Murraysville.